topic for this morning is vines and vineyards. And the reason is that there are lots of places in the Word that speak about vines and vineyards and those kind of things. For example, right in the earliest parts, we have Noah, who was the first to plant a vineyard, planted a vineyard um, as the first thing he did when he got out of the ark, and there was dry land. He got out of the ark, and the animals go, and he planted a vineyard. If we move up to the Joseph story in Genesis, we find what happened in the chief butler's dream was that he, uh, a vine would be there with three branches, and he would take the vine and, and be able to restore to Pharaoh, and there would be three days before restoration. But again, there's the issue of him taking grapes from a vine. And of course, the land of Canaan was a land of milk and honey and full of vineyards. It was one of the appeals of the country. Um, and for many times in those days, throughout that part of the world, a vineyard, someone who owned a vineyard, represented a wealthy landowner who was very successful. Um, you could make a lot of a good living running a vineyard. So it was a sign of wealth and the fertility of the land and a sign of the things going well in your life. You also have uh, Jotham later on in the book, in the Judges, you have Jotham in his parable about the trees. He was giving a speech and he wanted to say that the particular guy who wanted to be king was bad, but he said he told a parable and the, all the trees had a vote to see who they pick. And the highest one that was, believe it or not, the vine, the grapevine, even though it's not really a tree, it's a creeping vine. But still, because of the grapes and because of the way it works and because of the importance in their life, it was considered to be the most important of the growing things. So, as a result, there are lots and lots and lots of parables in the New Testament where the Lord's trying to teach about heaven, which is something nobody knows about, so he has to compare it to something that's familiar. So he uses vineyards. There's one in every village. People know what they are. So, in this reading from John, I'm going to read something to you from the Gospel of John, it illustrates a relationship. He uses it to talk about a relationship between us and the Lord. That the, the vine and the Lord is, connects us all together. He thinks, you know, here's a picture. You know, typical thing about vines is, like I said, they're a creeping, uh, vineyards are a creeping vine, but they are trained so you can get the grapes up off the ground, and they're oftentimes are on wires or whatever, but they, they don't naturally go like this, but they're, uh, anybody who runs a vineyard sets it up this way. And what you see is, here are all these different grapes, all stretched in different places on this long spectrum, you might even say left to right, or however you want to look at it, but just, these are all the people. And one vine that feeds all of them. That's the idea, that this is the life that comes up from the soil, from the earth, and comes up and feeds all the grapes and produces this very valuable thing. We're the valuable thing in this story, in all these uh, different um, parables. The one down here is from John 15, abide in me and I in you. So this is a picture then of the relationship between the Lord and his church. This is the church, this is the vine, we are the branches. So John 15 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, 
you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. And he closes with, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So again, thinking of that picture, again, you know, all those grapes, they look terrific on their own, those bunches of grapes, but think what happens if you cut the stem. The branch dies. We only can produce these good fruits, we can only have this good life if we're on that connection all to each other and the vine, which is the Lord's life. So it's a very important picture for us in terms of our relationship to the Lord in the world. So we're out on the branch, we may be distant, but still we can do good things. As it says, um, the whole idea is that we'll, that people will bear much fruit. He's looking to us to not only just abide in him or be with him. We're not just resting there. The idea is the branch, that's us, is supposed to produce good things in the world. So it's a challenge to us. Saying, the Lord's saying, I'm here to help you. And if you want to be, abide in me, if you want to be part of my program, you need to grow, become good fruit, and bear, and bear that fruit with others. So we think we're independent. We, you know, when, if we think about how we feel, it's a gift from the Lord that we feel like we're all oh, by ourselves and we live here and life is our own. But really, the secret is that we should be aware of is that life really flows from within. Just like the grapes are out there hanging out, thinking they're having a great time being grapes, but their life comes from the vine. Same with us. It flows secretly from within and we make choices but the power to do those things, the life that provides, that goes into everything we do, comes from the vine. So it gives us a top opportunity to reflect then about how our life functions. Uh, it's useful to remember that what the Lord is asking us to do, he says in one place, he says, you know, abide in me, abide in the Father, or he says, my words need to abide in you. He's saying the Lord and the Word are the things that provide us our life our ability to perform uses in this world, and our ability to enjoy life in this world. And it's a picture then of the life that we will all have in heaven. Amen.